Um, welcome to my first tutorial on coin roll hunting, bank mining. Some questions that have come up in some of my other videos. Just want to thank you all for watching those other videos and um, and commenting. So um, what I'm trying to hopefully at the end of this video is that you'll know um, basically what coin roll hunting is, uh, what you would want to you know how to do it, going to get out of it if you. So what I have here in front of you are. Um, just all the denominations of coins that are pretty easily available at banks, uh, pennies. And um, I also wanted to include currency because there are a lot of people who will also go for fancy notes. So here's a stack of ones and a stack of $2 bills. I mean, you can search other uh, denominations of bills and banknotes, but these ones are kind of the uh, ones that I feel like a lot of people do search simply because they're uh, not very um, expensive to sort through a large amount of them. All right, so before I get into um, you know, what you're going to want to do, how to get the coins from banks, what you want to look for, um, I guess the first thing is to kind of know what you're looking for. And, <clears throat> and um, I guess the first thing really is to uh, get that bank. So find your bank. Um, typically, and this is kind of like... Uh, uh, general housekeeping tips, uh, good practices, suggestions, whatever you want to call it, but bank etiquette is uh, is kind of the most important thing. When you're ordering these from banks, they don't have to do this for you. This is a courtesy. So uh, what you want to do is make sure that you never put the bank that you're getting coins from or that you're returning coins to in a situation that, that makes it inconvenient for them. Inconvenient for them. By doing so, it will actually increase the likelihood that You'll be cut off from that bank, and uh, you'll have to go and find another bank to order and return coins to. And and that actually will happen every now and again, no matter how uh, helpful or convenient you are. Or you know, some banks may not be able to order for you simply because they can't fit into their their weekly quota, or or their manager changes their mind. I mean, these things are going to happen. Um, so. Don't necessarily take it personally. There's plenty of banks out there, and when one closes, your you know your access to them for that reason, another one is available, most likely available to you. Um, I guess the big thing here is if you uh, just want to be careful because um, you, know, you may be using the bank for other other reasons, and uh, if they shut you down for this, they may close your account. So um, you know just just the fair warning you might want to be careful with that and and just you know tell them tell the manager or the vault manager what you're looking for and if they're able to help you they'll help you and and uh, so usually honesty and uh, being polite and courteous is the best way to get through this and get what you want and thanks in general are happy to help and if they start having problems they'll let you know so what would you be looking for when you're making rolls of coins well Anything um, 1981 and older is 95% uh, pure copper. A lot of people at one point were speculating that these would be um, uh, available to melt down and then you could sell them because up until uh, recently with copper prices doing quite well, a penny was worth over two cents a penny. So you kind of go through the boxes, sort out the copper ones, and then you would have an instant profit um, but of course it's it's illegal to melt these so it's all speculative and the idea would be to hold on to these until maybe the laws changed um, the rates of that in any box are usually like around 20 percent copper coins um, you know you might find a little bit more or a lot less depending on what part of the country you're searching uh, aside from just pure base metal content there's also um, a lot of varieties. Um, so these are, are coins that um, have maybe some uh, minting minting differences that you can find. There's proof coins. Um, so pennies are, are pretty fun. There's a lot of websites out there that will uh, help you with that, that you can kind of go and, and look for these uh, errors or, or uh, other rarities that are, I mean, they're not rare, but they just, uh, they just kind of are still floating around in circulation because um, there are just so many pennies out there that it's not too hard to, if you search enough, to find some of these wonderful ones. And then there's uh, uh, wheat pennies. Those are anything before 1959. And if you're really lucky, you'll also find Indian head cents. Those are um, 1908 and earlier, um, 1908 to, I think, 19, uh, 59 or something like that. So those are really, those aren't very common, but um, you know, so uh, 
That's really what you do. You just kind of you know break open the rolls and and then you kind of look through them and and uh, and hopefully you guys have some luck with that. <clears throat> when it comes to uh, returning these, I would suggest my my suggestion would be to find a bank that has a coin counter. Um, that is one of the easiest ways to return these because I mean if you're doing it for base metal, you're going to be returning about 80 percent of the coins you pick up. Um, Rerolling them is another way, but it's time consuming. So. <laughs> Uh, I would definitely find uh, find a bank that has a account a coin counter. Um, some other banks will allow you to put your coins into bank bags, and then you can uh, it'll count them later, and then you'll just have that amount credited to your account. That's another uh, possibility. It takes a little bit longer for that to process, but I mean, again, these are all things you want to look into um, when you if you are really trying to ramp this up to some type of. Uh, small scale operation or, or larger if you feel the urge. But yeah, so these are really fun. Um, again, there's a lot of websites out there that will uh, tell you what to look for in terms of varieties. Um, I would suggest if you uh, want to look for something like nickels are, are very similar to, uh, to pennies in many ways. Um, yeah, these are uh, copper and uh, nickel, so they're 25% uh, I think it's 25% copper, 75% nickel, or, or vice versa. But anyways, the point is they were, um, up until recently, uh, nickels were also kind of uh, an easy way to put some money aside, and, and they were worth at least, I think, six cents per nickel um, with copper prices and metal prices in general. Um, going through the floor, I believe nickels have um, recently gone down below their their face value um, it's the first it's been like that in a while but a lot of people are speculating that these as well could be potentially maybe um, something you can melt and um, in the future but so aside from base metal if you were to be looking through these there's a there's a number of things you could go for uh, uh, you know, modern day uh, <clears throat> kind of like the state quarters, nickels had uh, some interesting changes to the way that they're uh, to their reverse, which is kind of neat, but um, and their obverse, uh, just uh, in terms of uh, modern day prints. Basically, for these guys, anything um, anything before 1964 is something of you know, kind of like the wheat cents. People are starting to look at those as being the uh, the collectibles for for nickels. I mean, again, it depends on how good they look. But but uh, really anything before 1964, they kind of become a little bit more, more uh, um, and are something you'd want. Um, There's something called war nickels. Those are two and 44, and those are 35% silver. You can tell the war nickels because they'll have a, um, right above the Monticello building on the back, a big mint mark right there, P, D, or S, um, in the middle of the back. And, um, um, another thing you can look for for these are um, certain rare, uh, rare dates, key dates. People are still finding a lot of those um, in the uh, the Lincoln series, and you might even be able to find Buffalo nickels. Those are uh, 1937 and older, but they're still in circulation. Some people, I mean, you, they still can be found in circulation. It's not like they're uh, they're not very common. But, um, so again, um, as to you know, ordering these at banks, it's going to be pretty. Um, you know, it shouldn't be too difficult to get these. These are something that a lot of banks will have on hand, and you don't necessarily even need to have an account with those branches. Um, and uh, returning them, uh, I would also suggest finding. You know, rolling them is one way, but when in a, when it ever you can find a bank that has a coin uh, counting machine, those would be the ones I would suggest. And um, so that's really about it. Again, you can look for varieties, um, older dates and key dates, and, and there are plenty of them out there. If you were to, uh, to look through these, you may not find them in every box, but they're definitely available. Now we're getting out of the, um, the coins that you would want for uh, um, dimes and halves are uh, ones that please really looked at for. I mean, I would uh, not be going through dimes and quarters for any varieties, but a lot of people may. So, um, that's what I would definitely be searching for is the. Um, you might find some find some error coins or things like that, but definitely for the majority of what I believe people are looking for these days, boxes of dimes is um, silver coins. They're 90% silver, and um, that's really about it. You can. 
kind of break open the rolls and just edge search, look for the um, the ones that uh, don't look like they have a reddish hand on the side. That would be the copper inside of the modern day ones. It's more of like a silver. They look silver and um, 64 and older would be 90% silver. Um, and then anything 1965 and uh, to present would be um, the majority or nearly all of them are copper, I mean are not silver. You um, could find some proof that are um, made after 1960 for the majority everything everything after 196 is going to be um, not silver and before are 90 percent silver so you can just break these rolls open take the ones you uh you uh, return the rest and repeat and this is one of those uh, boxes that's our excuse me they are on hand at most banks ordering a couple extra boxes or even many necessarily um exhaust or uh, or overwhelm a branch because uh, they're usually buying and ordering these coins anyway. The turnover is, I find that it's something around one or two, so if you're lucky. It's usually about the rate of, uh, of return for dimes, but they are, dimes tend to actually be a little bit, you, know, you don't usually have those. That's really about it. All right, so quarters, just like dimes, they're, um, they're pretty easy to get on um, at any local branch banks that you could go to. I didn't include them in the opening picture simply because I wouldn't, uh, I kind of my, I have a preference against looking for these uh, through these for any types of um, for silver, um, and then again that's just my preference. But uh, it's I feel like it's because um, just uh, quarters are so common. You know, people in, it's it's a it's a coin that you use so frequently that um, I feel like all a lot of the silver has um, has already been taken out of these. So um, for silver find they're some of the uh, the least frequent to get um, to have silver actually found, but that shouldn't stop you if you want to look for other stuff. So um, there's so many state quarters and uh, just varieties. Quarters are um, are not uh, something to be overlooked for that kind of thing. You, know, you might be able to find some really cool cool keepers in this, but in terms of silver silver hunting, I would. I would definitely suggest sticking to um, dimes, dimes, uh, and half-dollar coins, and um, and even to a lesser degree, um, nickels for the war nickels. Just in the sense that, um, from what I've experienced and from what people have told me, when um, it's just that uh, quarters tended to be the uh, that uh, that denomination of coin that is really not not. Um, not holding a lot of, uh, of silver coins in the uh, in circulation anymore. So, uh, but the varieties and um, those other other things that you might be interested in finding, maybe putting together the state quarters if people are still doing that, that would be uh, my first recommendation. But again, um, to each their own, and these are not very hard to order at banks. And um, re-rolling these is uh, um, potentially just as easy as bringing them back. For uh, for a coin counting machine, simply because um, we're kind of getting to a larger denomination now, so it's, um, uh, I would recommend either um, with the dimes and nickels and pennies. It's um, a little bit more uh, more tedious to put those all back into the rolls. So but yeah, happy hunting if you're going for these guys. All right, so have dollar coins. These are um, this is what I primarily search. Um, they are a uh, Fun because they, they don't take too long to kind of go through a box and uh, it's um, kind of hit or miss when you come and look through these for any kind of silver coins but they are they can be really high in concentration for um, for silver per box it's funny um, you'll get a lot of skunks and then every now and again you'll just get uh, you get a couple of boxes that are just fantastic um, I, one of my videos uh, recently posted not too long ago had me um, pulling uh, I think well over fifty or sixty dollars face and in um, ninety and forty percent silver coins and that was just a wonderful wonderful day for uh, for all of this it's not very common anymore but um, people are still finding them people are still finding those boxes so um, for these anything 1964 and older just like for the quarters and dimes would be ninety percent. Uh, 1965 to 1970 would be 40%, um, and then there are uh, proof uh, coins from uh, the you know, the 90s and on that might um, also have uh, there might also be silver, um, 
but there's also proof coins from the from the 70s up that were not meant for circulation and um, anything after um, 2001 was not intended for circulation either uh, you'll find that if you do this if you search these boxes that you'll find a bunch of those uh, they're not very uncommon um, the uh, 2001 to, to present those coins do find their way back into circulation and um, and proofs they're a little less common than um, than the uh, minted after 2001 but so I kind of tend to hold on to them they look really neat they have a, a frosted the the, uh, the foreground is all kind of frosted and then the um, the bat the uh, the field the unprinted area is is very uh, reflective it looks nice um, they'll stick out when you see them <laughs> And they tend to be in pretty, uh, they can be in pretty good condition in many cases. They go back into circulation, they get rolled, and then, um, and then basically wait for people uh, to be coin roll hunting for them, and then they get, they get cherry picked. Uh, this is the only um, box that I would definitely suggest um, just being careful when you, when you order from banks. Uh, make sure that um, you're not ordering um, to a degree that maybe it exhausts them or their supplies or where they can store it. You never really want to put, for the half dollar coins, it's something that they're not doing. This is only because you're asking for them. It's not something that they could potentially uh, use in their uh, regular day affairs. So you never want to really put them into an inconvenient spot where um, you order a bunch of these boxes and, uh, and then people, and you can't pick them up or something like that. So just definitely make sure that you communicate um, and, and know what their needs are and, uh, and make your make your um, your wants uh, clear so that they'll let you know if it's acceptable or not and um, and that way you can really uh, keep a good relationship with the bank going for a long time um, something I didn't mention uh, for all these coins is that you never want to order from the same bank you return the coins to you would probably end up just uh, searching your own your own supply after a while and um, so I would definitely suggest looking for one bank to pick up from and a completely different uh, bank not just branches but different bank for uh, for returns and um, as I mentioned before the return bank I would suggest finding one that um, has a coin counter for half dollar coins it's pretty easy to put them right back in the rolls after you've edge searched that means you open up a roll um, open up the roll, pop them out, look for the look for the silver ones on the side, edge search, or if you're date hunting, look at the dates and then put them back and and then you can return the full box just like this to the bank and um, in many cases that's acceptable, they'll, they'll take that and um, and then you can just uh, trade it out for cash and start the same thing next week and, um, and that would be really how I would do it. Um, again, the banks will let you know if it's something that they can do and if they can't then just move on, look for another bank that will. Uh, there's a lot of credit unions as well that might um, uh, better assist you with these types of um, uh, requests. And uh, I'm just trying to think of any other little housekeeping tips for, um, for when you do this. Um, I guess another thing is you can, um, it's never a bad idea, at least at the beginning maybe, to check. All these boxes are usually, at least in this kind of box, it's going to have the holes in the bottom. So believe it or not, sometimes when you do this, you order, there may not be 50 rolls in there. So I would definitely check at the beginning so at least you are aware of it it's uh, it can be really frustrating to get to your house and find out that um, for some reason the roll uh, a roll is missing and then you have to go back to the bank and let them know it's, it's always good to have um, either a, a long-standing relationship with them just in case these types of things happen yeah so aside from that um, the orders um, at least for most of the places I go through, they have one to two ordering days per week. So you can either do like a standing order and have the same same order processed every week. And then what happens is they'll just let you know the day that you need to pick it up or you can call them. Um, giving them heads up and notice it is always great. And, and I would definitely start small rather than doing some massive order the first time through just to kind of find out if the bank is... Um, you know, what, what there is good for them because um, definitely after you start doing this a little bit you'll find that you know you may be able to uh, accommodate a larger order but your bank may not be able to accommodate that so again you want to kind of it's a little bit of trial and error but the best way to do this is always to be make sure that you're not inconveniencing the bank at all and that, I mean more than what you're already doing by ordering these coins and that way you can so um, I hope that was helpful and uh, yeah happy hunting
Okay, so <clears throat> when it comes to currency, much like the pennies and nickels and dimes and even quarters, uh, they're not too difficult to get from banks. Um, there's uh, you know one dollars one dollar bills are pretty easy. I tend to stick to them because they are um, not going to you know make a big dent in your wallet. Um, uh, getting a thousand of them is obviously a thousand dollars, and the same thing for a thousand twos is just two thousand dollars, and that may be a lot. I'm not trying to assume anything, but it's a lot easier to do that than to get large quantities of tens and twenties, and so that's kind of why I stick to these ones. Um, in terms of what you would be looking for, uh, the serial numbers are kind of um, what makes them unique. Each one has its own serial number, um, and so when you're looking at these, uh, you can go for um, some fancy, you know, like solid, which means the entire serial number is the same number. Binary, there's only two numbers. So it could be like 0 and 1 or 1 and 2 across the entire series. Or radar, which is um, kind of like a palindrome. So uh, whatever the four numbers begin with, and then it will be this, um, the same four numbers to end with, kind of in the reverse order. Um, and then there are ladders, which basically just increases so uh, from one number at a time. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like that. These are the things that we could potentially be looking for with these bills. Another thing are star notes, red seals. Um, so any bills, you know, typically anything beyond like anything older than the 60s, you might want to hold on to anyways if it looks good. Star notes, the uh, they actually have a star at the end of the series so instead of a letter it would be a star and that's usually to indicate that there's some type of printing error um, when it first was being when these bills were being made um, so that's really it for currency um, i would also just like to um, add one other thing that when you're going to the banks it's never a bad idea to ask for large dollar coins um, so that'd be like eisenhower dollar coins these um, you can't order them anymore, but they still get turned into banks, and um, you could potentially get a, you know, uh, silver Ikes. There's also uh, Morgan and Peace dollars that are still floating around out there, believe it or not. So those can sometimes turn up, and if you're fortunate enough to get them, it's simply because you asked for them. So sometimes you can get lucky like that. Uh, so again, uh, I just wanted to say thanks for all the comments on my previous videos. This uh, has been a lot of fun putting this one together. I hope it is helpful. Um, and uh, I hope that this helps when you're trying to go and look for ways to, uh, you know, find banks, um, start ordering from them, and then just what you can look for in the different denominations of coins and currency. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. And um, again, happy hunting.